Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a little look at visual sine waves. Uh, before we actually talk about some trigonometry sine cosine functions, let's actually just look at sound. In fact, um, you're actually looking at sound right now through this red box uh, in the center of the screen here. You're seeing what my voice looks like in a waveform. Um, sine and cosine waves um, also can be thought about as sound waves. I mean, the analogy isn't a hundred percent accurate, but what happens with sound waves is that you get to see um, certain kinds of patterns exist. And as we take a look at notes, primarily soft and loud and high and low notes, you'll see that there are um, ways to look at how sound um, can be applied to sine and cosine waves as we do some graphing and transformation of that later in this chapter. But what I want to focus on right now is that um, my voice, uh, like a music file, is pretty dirty. It's, it's not very easy or clean to see, whereas um, pure tones uh, might be a little bit better to see. Over on the left-hand side, I've got some tones. I've got, um, this is uh, all within the spectrum of human hearing, although you may not hear all these, or moreover, your speakers may not be able to reproduce all of these sounds, but I'll play one of them for you right now. There we go. Now that sound, um, which we'll turn off right there, uh, is kind of kind of annoying, but it's the it's the 1,000 hertz um, sound. And um, in just a little bit, we'll actually take a look at that through this um, scope here in, in the middle here. Uh, if we go down in terms of number of hertz, we get lower tones like this one. Now there's a big question of whether or not you can actually hear this through the speakers that are being produced. So let me move up a tone here to maybe 200 hertz. Compare that versus the thousand. Take it down to 200 again. All right, now when we have a little break in the video here, you'll actually get to see um, these actual tones. Now if you go higher than a thousand, it gets a little abrasive to the ear. Um, here's a thousand. Two thousand. 5,000. Okay, that's enough of that. Now, those tones right there um, signify that if you have a higher note, uh, the higher note, um, it waves a lot faster, or you'll see the actual wave happening more, re more uh, readily. Um, if it's a lower tone, you'll see the wave uh, moving more slowly. Um, and I can, uh, after the little break in the video here, I'll actually do so with the sound of my voice, and then we can uh, see how uh, we can maybe look at this in terms of sine and cosine. Okay, we're back, and let's take a look at uh, me actually just reproducing some of these uh, notes myself. Now, if I uh, sing a, a tone, you'll actually see the tone oscillate on the uh, screen. Now, if I change the pitch of the tone, um, like let's say I change the pitch upwards, then the pitch will actually um, repeat faster. Um, it'll actually, the, the, the period or the time at which the cycle repeats will be a lot less. So here's one tone, and I'll quickly bring it up, and you, since I'm not going to change the note drastically, it's going to be a very slight difference. So you saw that the, um, the, way, the curve got a little closer. And the same thing will happen in the opposite direction if I go from a note to a lower note. Now, these aren't perfect waves, but I'm going to try to freeze one. If I can get this to look like a sine wave, I'm going to try to do my best to freeze the wave and then draw on it a little bit and show you how that could maybe look at a cycle or period and amplitude. Um, and one little thing about amplitude. 
amplitude is volume. It's the pretty much the easiest concept to get. So if I talk really softly, it's pretty small. And if I talk loudly, it's pretty big. Uh, in fact, uh, I've got to be aware that in, in audio, if you talk too loudly, it clips the sound. So you see a lot of square waves here. Beep! Those square waves just means that you're distorting and there's no place for the wave to go. Um, that's not going to happen with our trigonometry drawings, but, you know, just a little practical application there. Okay, so let's, um, let me try to make a perfect wave, and then I'll freeze the frame here. So here we go. Okay, I've frozen it right there, and I should be, I'm still recording. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to carefully take my pen here, and I'm going to draw an X and Y axis on this here. Now, the... Uh, the, the easy one to draw is going to be the x-axis. So I'm going to draw that going from left to right here. Sorry, it's not exactly perfect. But now what I'll do is show you what a sine wave uh, might look like. And I'm going to start from the upswing of the sine wave. Okay, so here's the y-axis. All right. And you'll notice that the sine wave starts here. It goes up. It goes down. And right here at this spot... This is considered one period of the wave. It has made a full circle, and this happens within 0 to 2 pi of a circle. So this is considered one sine wave from here to here. And then from that dot, we'll go through another cycle, and we'll just put a dot right there. And this will be 4 pi along the, um, along the x-axis. And then, again, you can see we can make another cycle and another cycle. So this is an example of a sine wave. Now, did I just sing the correct sine wave note? Um, not at all, not at all. In fact, let me turn off the sine draw here, and let me show you um, a picture of how sine wave is created. You can see that this graphic image, um, thank you, Wikipedia Commons, for allowing this public domain image here, uh, and the creator, uh, Mr. Malter, uh, or Mrs. Malter, don't know uh, who the gender is there. Um, this is a, a picture of a wave as a point travels around the unit circle from 0 to 2 pi, or 0 to 360 degrees. You can see that its y height starts at 0 and ends at 0, but throughout its cycle here, this one period, um, you can see how, like I drew it on the graph on the red box over to my left, you can see where it's being drawn on my right. You can see how it at pi over 2, or halfway between 0 and pi, it's, it's at its highest point, and then at its uh, lowest point at 3 pi over 2, which is about right here. So I'll call out the points as it goes around. 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, or 2 pi. Now, we can do the same thing for cosine, and cosine unfortunately does not have a um, animated graphic, but again, thank you to author Geek3, he or she made this beautiful little picture of it. So if you went, imagine the unit circle in the previous picture, but instead of measuring its distance of y, you measured its distance of x. And a unit circle, and this is where I'm going to freeze the screen here, and do a little drawing myself. Okay, now what I'm going to do here is try to show you um, how that actually, you know, works on the graph there. So imagine that we have our unit circle, all right, and there's my x and y axis. At this point, this is the point 1, 0. This is the point 0, 1. This is the point negative 1, 0. And this is the point down here at um, 0, negative 1. Now you can see over here where this first point, we'll put a blue dot here, matches this blue dot right there. Then at pi over 2, which is halfway between 0 and pi, or at 90 degrees, the point is 0, 1. So the x value at that moment is 0. See, we're looking at just the x values on cosine. Then we're going to go to the pi here, which is at negative 1 for my x. So there's my third blue dot. My fourth blue dot is at 3 pi over 2, or 3 halves pi, which is going to be right here, showing that my x is back again at 0. And then finally, the last point is right up here at 2 pi, which takes us back to here. This is called the cosine wave. Now, that actually goes through all the demonstrations I wanted to do with you with sine and cosine. Uh, we will be looking at tangent and all of the 
inverse functions, the secant, cosecant, and cotangent functions, later in this chapter. So to review here, we took a look at how the graph is made. We looked at ideas of um, frequency, period, and amplitude, and this is really what this whole chapter is all about. So get your graph paper ready, put your calculators away, unless you want to check your answers, and let's get started.